what we did on the old the foot washing machine. These fasteners here, then little suckers there, the little kind of like hourglass looking things. Apparently they're called a clutch head. Yeah. That's a lot of holes. Hey guys, welcome back to DMAT Customs on YouTube. Dave here, back in the garage on the old Area 51. This is the project for this week. Get started on that firewall hole filling business. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so right, squeezed in here, here but here we have the firewall. Um, I've got a bunch of holes that I'm going to delete on the said firewall and obviously it needs a bit of a clean up. It's got a couple of bits of flaky paint and that on there that we'll get into as well. Um, for some of these holes we'll just be able to kind of fill with weld but can't really fill that with weld so I'm going to make up a whole bunch of little um, little discs basically to weld in there which means when I say make up a whole bunch of little discs it means I'm going to sit there and cut them out with tin snips so I'll go and do that and then we'll be back when it's time to start prepping this up cleaning it up we'll probably take these off and that out and got a little bit of hammer and dolly work to do on here as well so then we can uh, start getting this ready to smooth it out ish not doing the full smooth firewall because that would entail cutting the whole thing out and starting again so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to fill up the holes I don't want, leave the holes I do want and paint it. <laughs> fill it, paint it. Clean up my shitty welds and then paint it. You know what I'm saying? So let's get at it. Okay so I've already been and measured off a whole bunch of holes and drawn a whole bunch of circles and even started cutting a couple of little disky things um, just on a little bit of electric valve well I think it's electric valve it's not super thick but neither is the firewall so but it'll plug up the holes so that being said I'm just going to cut these out with tin snips and I'll meet you back here when we've uh, got them all cut oh, and I used this thing here too I forgot I had it and it's a handy little piece for drawing nice tidy circles on the smaller scale so yeah so yeah anyway so I'm gonna cut those bigger ones so that's the um the old heater hose one there so it's like two circles joined together the right distance apart hopefully come on many hours later okay so sidetrack anyway cut all my little discs they're over there on the bench somewhere came over here and started looking at what we did on the old the foot washing machine um, on the old foot for these body mounts sort of thing and I wasn't really that happy with how I'd left the welds in that video so I got in with the old power file give them a little bit of a clean up and now I've just been back through this one with the TIG and just kind of given it another pass and just kind of smooths out and kind of puddles in some of the little pinholes and stuff like that. So I'm just going to do that to this one and then uh, then we'll move on to getting some more on the fire all done. Okay? It's hot though. Tell ya. So, alrighty, so um, 
I kind of went through and I kind of re-tagged and then I blew a hole and then I just filled it all up and then I had to grind it all down and so I ground some more stuff. So I'm kind of marginally better off than I was before I kind of went and revisited these. I'm happier with them anyway. They're not so kind of like puckery and crappy look, looking like it won't take much to sort of smooth those out and make them into smoothed out repairs. So next up um i don't know i might take some of this stuff off that i don't need on there for now and uh, i don't know wire wheeling maybe yeah okay so i see a lot on the um forums about you know in the facebook groups about these these fasteners here them little suckers there the little kind of like hourglass looking things Apparently they're called a clutch head. Now, in the States, everyone just rocks on down to, you know, O'Reilly's or wherever, and you buy a little kit to undo clutch heads. Never ever seen them for sale in New Zealand, but I have had some success with just a flathead screwdriver on them, if they're loose enough. I've got them in the bomb truck too, on the door hinges. Never been able to get those undone, but I have had these ones undone, and I'm gonna undo these. What's that? Screwdriver. That one there is just a flathead screw, so find your screwdriver. Start with the screw. Yep. Oh, look at that. Easy. Too easy. It's obviously been out before. I think that's my ma and pa showed up. Come and have a cup, cup of coffee with it. If you get just the right size flat head in there, it kind of does that. Alrighty, so just done a little bit of wire wheeling on the old holes that I'm going to be welding up. Um, battery's nearly dead. Um, so I'm going to strip the whole firewall of all the paint that's on there, but I'm just going to wire wheel the holes that I'm going to weld up so I can, you know, because I've just cleaned off all my little white circles and stuff like that. So now there's a few that are these where I've drilled out these spot welds and that that are a bit puckered and things like that. I might just kind of do a quick hammer and dolly on those, flatten them off before I attempt to um, fill those holes with the old the TIG, try the TIG, give it a shot. Hammer, dolly. Um, try this left handed. Didn't circle it, but Ooh, bang. Right, it is actually a few days later from when I started pissing around here. Um, about a week later, actually. So, been out today at a uh, car show out in a place called Pukahina, which is, I don't know, probably half an hour's drive that way up the coast fundraiser for the local surf club or fire brigade or something like that. A little community so it's all volunteer fire. I think it's and volunteer surf clubs. So. so supported them. Went there, looked at cars. And other stuff. Look around. Also, I'm gonna do a bit of a massage on this. Probably can't see. I'm gonna do a little bit of a massage on here because that's where the filler tube for the transmission comes, and it's it's already a bit bashed up. So I'm just gonna 
maybe put a little bit of heat on it and see if I can just run it in just a bit. It probably won't even matter now that the motor sits lower, but I'll clearance it just a wee scotch anyway. It won't make any difference from the inside, but it'll uh, hopefully, here, um, hopefully just make it a little bit clearer. I've got to grind that old handbrake thing out too. Yeah, so I'll carry on. Okay, so it's a little bit of a crease there still. I might do a bit of more sort of hammer and dolly sort of stuff on. Um, there was a bit of more of a crease in the middle there, which I managed to just flatten out with a hammer and dolly. So now I'm not a panel beater or a body man or whatever by trade or anything like that. I've just kind of like play around with shit and hope I get it somewhere near right. Um, <laughs> which sounds like making excuses for being an amateur, but that's what I am, an amateur. Not only GoPros, they just shut off whenever they want to. Um, but anyway, that's what I am, an amateur. So like, another mic, <laughs> I know you're 53 years in the game, full credit to your man. Um, but yeah, so if you see anything that you can stop me before I go too far, let me know. Um, but these videos are usually recorded probably two or three weeks, sometimes a week before, uh, you know, they actually come out, I actually get them up onto the YouTube. So, sometimes it's too late, but sometimes with the body stuff, I might be able to kind of come back and redo some stuff if, if you know, you give me some good pointers or whatever. But I kind of got a bit of a plan. I've, I've kind of done a couple of stuff before, but not in a professional manner, um, and done to... Oh, a draw the line standard if you know what I mean so like when you're doing a you know the checkbook is not blank put it that way so there's a line where I have to kind of go that is enough this is what I can afford to do um, this is what I'm gonna do so and it's as long as it kind of gets sealed up and I'm not too fussed about it being laser straight and stuff like that because I just don't have those skills to get them or patience got some skills but not patience to just keep going around and around and around and around trying to get something straight so more justification for my slackness to come <laughs> um, but yeah anyway so clearance that that's the that dipstick tube comes through there but like I was saying the um, mode is now a little bit lower so I probably didn't even have to do that but I just wanted to do it just to make sure that we're kind of going to be well clear of that dipstick tube and, and any other kind of wiring or hoses that got to run back there um so next up not today i'm going to start 
welding up all these holes. That's a lot of holes. There's none down here, eh? That's no, all of them. What's that? If anyone knows, can you let me know? I think it might be for like window squirters up there. Maybe the rubber hose comes up through. I don't know whether these even had window squirters, but could be the wire for the. There's a light under the hood. Could be the wire for that. Hmm. Don't know. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so it's cooling off nicely. And I've got to clear this thing off here because I've got to weld that up too. I can't forget to do that. Don't let me forget. Um, and yeah, straight on. Uh, I might want to hammer that up a bit before I try to weld anything to it. There's no point trying to weld something to something that's crooked because then you just end up with crooked things welded in and then, you know, more work afterwards. So, yeah, till tomorrow. Hey guys, all right, hang up, camera's crooked. Oh, they're on crooked. Anyway, so a couple, well, it's a day later than when I was last recording anything or doing anything on this, but um, been out all day today or most of the day, so I thought I'd just come and do a, a little bit, just fill in some holes. Um, I'm gonna use my little tigger later, and I've got a 1.6mm tungsten in there and a smaller cup. So we'll see how that goes. Um, not very proficient with doing sheet metal stuff with, with the TIG, but I want to get better, so I'm going to practice on my firewall rather than on scrap metal and stuff like that. Makes sense, eh? Hey? Right, so um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about it. Just kind of filled in a couple of little like tear holes from when I drilled out the old spot welds and stuff. But one more to do down here, and then I might have a crack at welding in a couple of the um, other little disky bits and stuff but yeah I'll get on plug that little hole there and then we'll, we'll, we'll move ahead from there okay. down a little bit just the old amperage and that because I'm getting a bit more kind of pucker than I would kind of really like but I'll just do that I'll just squeeze past you here mate yeah all good right we'll try that I might try just filling in a hole with the old filler rod some of these smaller holes see how that goes Move around the holes, work my way through them. Hopefully, I've got the camera pointed and rough in the right direction. And about there. Okay, so I got that bottle filled up the other day, thinking I still had heaps in that bottle, but I ran out. That's what it does when you're not using shielding gas, it does all this kind of real brown, kind of like goopy thing goes on and stuff. Um, so 
Damn it, I thought I had more argon than that. And I thought I still had half a bottle, but I was doing a bit of welding down here, and, you know, earlier in this video. So I'm out of argon. Got heaps of argon, argon CO2 mix, which is what we call argon shield. So now before I can finish TIG welding any of this, I'm going to have to go and get that filled up. So I can either do that or I can switch to the MIG and MIG weld it. Either either. It'll get done, it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to, I'm kind of disappointed. I just wanted to kind of practice doing that, you know, making nice little piggy fill up holes and stuff. But anyway, that's all, <laughs> it's bummed me out. So that's it for today. I'll see you back in a day or two or whatever when I get back out here and do some more. But yeah, managed to plug up a few holes just with the TIG, so you know, these worked okay. A little bit of warpage, but once I kind of flush that down, I'll be able to just get in there with the hammer and dolly and just give it a little knockity knock and uh, make it not so whoopty woo. Yeah? Okay. See you in a couple of days. Okay, so that belt was literally seconds old. Now, this is these belts. I've used these before, bought them from the same place, and they used to get more life out of them. And they've got a directional arrow on the inside there, right? Yeah, you see that? There's a little arrow on there. So I'm assumptioning that that's the direction that they travel, because this has got a directional arrow that way, right? So when it's spinning around at however zillion RPMs, it's kind of, you know, like the, where the joint is, it's hitting the steel that way, it's going that way, so it's not hooking under it. But they just keep snapping, like it's expensive. They're not expensive, but when you go through them, it's like the rate that I go through them, and they're really a handy little tool but man I'm just chewing through them and the I even bought the same brand belts they're worse they fall off and snap well they snap all the time so I'm gonna try a little experiment and I'm gonna put this belt on backwards and see whether it lasts any longer if it doesn't then it doesn't so oh, hang on I've got to push the thing up so, Try that. Hmm. Right. Where were we? Where were we? Okay. I wonder if it's dark. And my sunnies on, not my safety sunnies. See that? Just rips off at the joint. And I'm not putting any pressure on them, I'm just gently doing the really jig thing that I just is doing my head in. Because the, these are a great tool to have. It's starting to sound like a ranter. These are a great tool to have when they everything runs right. But man, that is just doing my head in. And it gives you a fright, if you haven't noticed me near shit myself every time they snap. Another packet. Okay, so running it backwards really made no difference. I mean, slightly longer, slightly longer duration, but I've even tried running it with that arm up so there's not so much tension on the belts, but... Hey, back a couple of days later. 
got the old uh, argon bottle swapped over and uh, so we're ready to carry on when I get a minute so I'll just gotta get this installed on the old pig and uh, on the whatever that's here should, should be an in inverter I don't really know what any of that means but it's a little TIG welder, inverted TIG, don't know what that means either, other than it's a TIG. Don't know what inverter technology does, but it's my little TIG and it needs argon to carry on. So I'll put this on. <coughs> I just made a little thing on there out of an old baked bean can and a bit of exhaust tubing to hold my TIG rods because I used to just hook them into the chains and they'd fall over and the chains would only come unhooked and next thing there's TIG rods that falling everywhere so that ain't gonna happen no more. In theory, anyway. Ready to go. Oh, yes. Well, Sweet. So we're ready for when I can get back out here and start welding this up. Um, been thinking, there's a couple of these holes. Oh, hang on. A couple of these holes here, these old firewall holes here, are kind of like pressed and pushed back. That one, that one, and that one. Now I was just going to cut a little disc and weld them in, but it's like if I need to hammer it, I'm going to have this lip on the back. So I'm thinking I might need to actually drill them out a little bit oversized just so I can do a nice kind of flat butt weld rather than trying to weld onto that and if it mind you it might not distort that much if it's got that in there I might do that one first and uh, see if I can get it you know to flush out nicely without getting some warpage and that going on and um, yeah make the call on whether I cut these out further and go from there. I just won't be able to hammer them up from the backside that well if they do warp. I'll try one and if it doesn't weld nicely then I'll drill it out with a hole saw or something and then drill these ones out a bit bigger. I should probably just drill that one out bigger anyway because it's all kind of bent and twisted anyway. This one here, so it's all kind of like already whoop de -woo in as it as we speak. Yeah. Where'd that thing go? Right, it's a couple of days later now, and uh, I welded in that first plug without taking out the drilling it out any further. And um, I think it might be alright. Um, if anything, it's actually a little bit proud. There's a lot of, pardon me, there's a lot of support around here to stop it kind of warping more so than in these big flat areas. So I think we might be right with those. I'll probably, but I will still drill that one little one out there. So, but anyway. Um, I'll carry on welding up some of these holes. I did cut a bunch of little discs for these slightly bigger holes, but I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to get in there with like the magnet clamp or whatever to to tack them in to get them started. So I did just fill a couple with filler rod, and um, we'll have to grind those back. So uh, where did we get up to? We got oh, I've got this sitting up here. So I might try one of these little tabs and see if I can weld them in that way with the old TIG and um, yeah, keep moving forward, progress, get at it. Where's my gloves at? Ugh. 
need to clean my tungsten. Okay, I did turn the gas on. I didn't think I did for a minute there, but take two, we'll have another crack at it. That didn't work because it uh, <laughs> just melted my little tab. So I'm now I've got a big blob there that I probably should have stopped and ground a bit back off. Um, yeah, the magnet does weird things. We noticed it when I was welding like welding up holes in, um, on a mate's um, ranchero. We were trying to use magnets to kind of hold the little tabs and it was um, just fighting us all the way. So we ended up using um, some long nose pliers or needle nose pliers as some folk call them. So I might try that on these and, and see if I can get it to work that way without completely cooking the um, little, little fillet patch. than it's worth trying to use those little discs to get in there you end up sort of farting around too much and melting them and stuff so I might just do these last couple three four five six seven eight oh just without them and then just do these bigger ones with a um with the old little filler panel I'm going to have to do a bit of hammering and dollying when I'm finished grinding this back, so it is what it is. Get a little bit of heat in here and it sort of warps it a little bit. You can see it on this one here, that one's pulled in, that one pulled out, and that one pulled in, so it's got a bit of a whoop you do going on there, but I reckon I can bring it back around, so I'll just carry on overheating it.
right, this one here, I'm going to drill out because it's a bit kind of warped in that anyway for some reason. So I'm going to drill it out to get rid of that kind of pushback. Don't look at that, just, just ignore that. And is that a hole in there? Oh, that is a shiny bit. I can't tell. Um, but I'll drill that out, cut a wee disc to weld that in. So start with drilling it out, I guess. Yeah. There we go. I might just give that a bit of a hammer up. Oh, should I? I'm gonna have to hammer it up again later, anyway. So. Do do. That bit of steel. Okay, that moved. <laughs> Try again. That's fair enough. Alright, so I'm going to cut that out. Just giving these, like, I'm not cutting them like and firing them up into a perfect circle or anything. I'm just kind of doing like a pentagon or something, like about 10 or 15 or 30 little snips just to get them roundish. And, uh, I mean, you could go all out and. Okay, as I was saying, you could go all out and cut them into perfect circles, but I'm just kind of cutting them into roundabouts and I'll fill the rest up with a bit of weld and bog and stuff. Oh, I've got to cut that off too. So, but my aim for tonight is to weld up that and I've got the old heater, heater one I wouldn't mind trying to get done tonight as well. So, I need to get my gloves back on. I have to move these out of the way here. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get them that close to the old camera. It'll probably fritz out or something. Tungsten. I think that hit the ground. <laughs> right, I'll go and give this a sharpen up Oop, and then I'll um, weld that in. Okay, sharpen the tungsten so hopefully the camera is pointing in roughly the right direction but I'm probably just going to be you're going to like get a good look at my elbow and stuff like that so let's do it this way maybe? Don't know. Contaminated my tungsten again. Sharpen the tung tungsten. <laughs> this is the third or fourth time I've seen this. Sharpen the tungsten, carried on welding, forgot to start recording. Now the camera keeps turning off all by itself. Um, so I got that welded up and got one more kind of main hole to do, which is this one up here. See that one? And then there is that there, which I'll have to cut that old blade off the point in here, see that piece there, which is for the old handbrake rod. So I'll move ahead, get that welded in, and then, yeah, take from there. Alrighty, so that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight anyway, because it's like Thursday night, and 
thought I just I just wanted to get ahead. I didn't really do much um, last weekend on the Aviary 51. Went did a couple of car events. Didn't film them, but uh, they were all good. Got sunburnt. My forehead's a little peeling in that. Um, oh, there's a little pinhole there I can see, but that's all right. So that's all those kind of welded in. I'll get in there and I'm going to kind of grind them back or just get in there with the power file probably. Take them down and then maybe finish them up with a roll up. Look for any pinholes, I can just see one in that blob there, but that's that's to be expected when I'm at the helm. Um, and then I have to hammer that stuff out and try and straighten it up. Um, from the inside, it doesn't put too much of a big mound on the inside either. Oh, there is on that one. <laughs> um, some of these aren't too bad. But um, I'll get in there and give them, just take the, the lumpy, bumpy bits off them and stuff as well, but it will... We'll get to that maybe on the weekend. But that's enough for today anyway. It's all cooling off all right. What did I do last? That, that one up there. It's got a bit of a warping in it. Now, I see, you know, like when people are migging stuff in, and I've done it in the past and that as well, you kind of like do a little bit, cool it off, do a little bit, cool it off. Now, I had the TIG dialed quite a way down so it was probably running a little bit colder than it really should when I was filling in some of these holes and just doing a few little touches and then pulling away I could see the warpage in it straight away so it's like stopping and starting I don't think would have made much of a difference because this is thin man this is super thin steel on these uh, early 50s sheds thinner than um, well, my old 65 Fury had thicker steel basically and an old HT Monaro I did had way thicker, thicker steel it was probably about double the thickness of this but it was softer weird but um yeah so I'm going to have a couple of days tomorrow and then I'll be back at it Saturday hopefully and for you it'll be like hey back so see you then hey guys bro it's a couple of days later again now um where i left off i had been welding up all of these holes and stuff on the firewall and warping the buggery out of everything um so back on the weekend now so i've got to do this last one i've got to kind of unpick this um bracket Here, i'll show you Oops, hang on here we go see so i just got to get this off and fill out that hole and there's probably a little bolt hole in there as well so I'll um, just probably grind these little spot welds out and hopefully just be able to peel that off and then um, weld up those holes and then I can set about getting this all ground up and start getting it ready to get some epoxy on there and obviously you've got to remove all the surface rust and the old paint and things like that so I'm going to spend a bit of time on the old wire wheel to get this ready cleaned up for the paint but that might be another video so yeah <sighs>
Now that's the last of the firewall holes for now until I weld it up I should say. Um, blew out down the bottom there but managed to kind of fill it up but anyway that's that's yeah. There's a pinhole. Oh there's a pinhole there so I'll probably find pinholes in these. Um, is there another one there? There's two. Oh, I'll grind them back and then I'll look for all the pinholes and I'll plug up all the pinholes. Oh, I've just seen another one. I've got the, the door open now so I've got light coming from that direction so I'm starting to see all the little pinholes in my welding. So what I'll do is I'll grind them back probably 95% and then look for pinholes and uh, plug those up and then do the final kind of like grind back and then I have to sort of do a bit of hammer and dolly stuff on here. So I'll get on to doing some grinding and I'll check back in. Um, what I'm going to do, I suppose, I, I, yeah, you don't need to see all the grinding. That is like hellishly boring and I hate doing it, but it's one of those things. Um, I will put a new flap disc on, take them down most of the way with that. If I can, can't get into them with the flap disc, I'll use the old power file down there. And then when we get to that kind of like final finish, I might grab the old little roll locks out and give them a little whip whip with the roll locks. And then yeah, that'll be the holes welded up. I'm going to first kind of pass on the grind on the outside, but I thought I'd show you this, what I kind of often do, if I can, when I get to the inside, I'll knock those down a bit, I won't kind of flush them out completely, I'll just knock them down a bit, so if I have to do a kind of bit of hammering from the back side, it doesn't push a high spot out to the front, if you know what I'm saying, so I'm just going to go around and give these a bit of a, bit of a flatten off with the old grinder and the power file and whatever tools I see fit to get in to there. the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 don't need a bank no I'm Okay back again been chasing pinholes ground some back just chased a few more that I opened up whilst grinding back the pinholes um so just got to kind of grind those back and then i'll start kind of hammering this hopefully back into submission there's a bit of warpage in that here and there so i just need to stretch out some steel because i think it's shrunk a little bit that that's right now wake up it's time to look at the enemy look in the mirror if he is no friend to me it's not working now maybe it's the chemistry it's time to break up so i can make a better me Face while he's looking back, mirror breaks. I 
aftermath When I hate, I attack Okay, so I'm back. Um, well, I, didn't, I actually just went and had some lunch and stuff. Um, but I came back and did some more hammering, managed to crack open one of my little patches, and then tried to weld it up, and then just blew it into like a crater in it. So I had to fix all that up. There was that one down there. It's actually still a little bit high. I might do a little bit more grinding on that. Um, and yeah, kind of got these kind of relatively straight, probably as straight as my skill set will allow. Um, down here is where the, I know you can still see a little bit of light under there. So there's a few high spots in that there. I might spend a bit more time on it yet, but or I might not. There's a bit of a low spot there, right there. Um, and yeah, a few high spots, but yeah, a little skimmer filler and a bit of pipe build primer and stuff. Now, you never know, there's gonna be a motor in the way and a whole bunch of engine bay crap, so I won't get too stressed out about it. And yeah, I just go round and round in circles, keep keep on um, <laughs> grinding, welding, cracking, grinding, welding, cracking, hammering. Um, but anyway. I think that's where I'll leave this video, which is kind of a bit of, you know, it's just welding up some holes in the fireball, but it's progress again. So, because next up, I've got to get under here a bit and um, tidy some of this up. So when I start kind of etch priming and that, I can kind of fade back into what I haven't done on the floor because I've got to get this steel sealed up as soon as possible. But before I can do all of that, I've got to go and get all this down to something nice and even these are flashing off and they're only sort of two weeks two weeks old i think um since i did those and yeah so if you haven't subscribed go and subscribe it's obviously it's well worth it you get to see this and i've lost my safety goggles around here somewhere as well i don't know what i've done with those um so before i can carry on i've got to find those okay totally getting off track um yeah, so subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, like, comment, share, all that kind of stuff. Um, next up, I'm going to carry on with this firewall. Got to clean up some of this stuff. Welding, grinding, wire wheeling, hopefully epoxy each priming the firewall and the front part of the under the car. Okay, next time. That'll be, that'll be next time. Till then, take it easy. Peace.